skeletal, weighty, regulated, all black, with a magazine big enough to bring a round of drinks on. It's the M60 from the guys at Snow Peak. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. This week it's a look at the M60 from Snow Peak. And this is really very different from the P15 I reviewed recently. The main instantly noticeable difference is the weight. Because this tops the scales at a claimed just under 3 kilograms or just over 6.6 .6 pounds, which is nowhere near as heavy as some rifles out there. But this is very noticeably heavier than the ultra lightweight P15. After saying that, this is loaded up with more equipment and will naturally add weight. Let's take a closer look, shall we? It is all black and is 925 millimeters long, or around 36 and a half inches. The barrel is 610 millimeters and comes supplied with a removable silencer making this, in sub 12 foot pounds, very quiet. Removing this silencer is a little pointless really, because it still leaves the overall length of the rifle because of the extra long 205cc air cylinder. I suppose the only reason you would take the silencer off would be to replace it with one of your own. I would probably suggest you don't need to do that at all. In spite of its length, I would still class this as perhaps a bullpup, but maybe some sort of hybrid bullpup. It is available in 177.22 and 2.5 calibers, and with that huge magazine is capable of carrying 24, 20 and 18 rounds respectively. Blimey, you probably wouldn't need to reload a magazine during a night's pest control, let alone fill her up with air. The top rail is Weaver Picatinny and is plenty long enough for you to find your perfect eye to scope position. The cheek rest isn't adjustable, but this isn't a deal breaker. All you need to do is choose your scope mounts correctly to suit. There is also a rail on the underside of the air cylinder which allows you to fit a quality bipod or most anything else that may float your boat as it were. The side lever is on the right hand side and is really very smooth with a cam click to close it away once it's been cocked. Below this is the safety catch which is, has a very military feel to it and is a simple S or F for safe or fire. There is no red indicator on it to tell you when you're in fire. The safety is only on the right hand side and is easily operated using your trigger finger if you're right handed. If you're left handed though, it becomes a little more awkward to try and use your your thumb rather than your finger. Whilst we're down this area there is the trigger which is a beautiful thing and is adjustable. A two-stage item as you would expect and it has to be said it is quite a shock just how good it feels. It's got a really nice second stage and it's high quality. There is a gauge just up from the trigger which is the regulator gauge and just like the air pressure gauge on the front is a nice size and very clear and easy to read. The air pressure gauge at the front is colour coded as well to show you where the max 250 bar fill pressure is. The filler probe cover is around this front area and is a twist dust protector. The grip is AR15 style and rubberized for excellent grip. The rear houses the meat plate sized magazine and it tucks away nicely so it isn't in the way at all. The rear butt pad is rubberized and adjustable to help with that personal comfort zone. 
A lot of you will know the skeleton style gun is not my go-to gun, but I do appreciate one when it feels like this is well thought out and attention has been paid to engineering it correctly. This is one of those and is surprisingly well made. You do only get the one magazine with this, but they throw you a tin of pellets in to get you started. Firstly then, let's get this over the chronograph and see what this 177 is doing with a few different pellet types. The 8.44 grain JSB pellets are the first choice and they saw 798 feet per second, which is 11.94 foot pounds or 16.18 joules, which is about as hot as you want a sub 12 to be. I thought I would then drop some heavier pellets in to see what the difference was, considering it has a regulator on board. Well, using 10.34 grain JSBs, it saw 721 feet per second, which is again 11.94 foot pounds or 16.19 joules. So, still right up there, no difference in foot pounds, but a slight change in joules. Time to drop a scope on this and get it out on the range and see what the accuracy of that CN barrel is like. I decided to fit a quality yet budget Orion scope, which is again high quality and yet more budget end. Now let's get this out on the range at say 40 meters. The Snow Peak Model M60. It's Definitely one for the skeletal military style AR-15 grip type boys who love these things. Uh, as most of you know, I'm more a traditional rifle, but this is actually really comfortable. The cheek pieces are plastic, but it's nicely rounded. So on a cold day, you're not touching metal like you are on some of them. So that's quite good. The only thing is on a hot day, you're still picking it up because it's quite warm. I've put the Orion scope on it because whilst this is a, a good quality rifle it's it's not the top end two grand type thing so i would didn't want to put something like a continental scope on it, it it's not fair it's overkill so like for like and i've put an orion scope on it which is brilliant lovely and clear the whole thing is not heavy it's nicely balanced to be fair although i'm going to be resting anyway and it is pretty quiet you've got a shrouded barrel and you've got the silencer on the end so no problem you've got a 250 bar fill so you should get that 200 plus shots that they claim the trigger is really really nice and of course it's regulated so shall we give it a go the magazine fits nicely and smooth in there so you've got it whether you're left-handed or right-handed it's not going to get in the way at all <coughs> excuse me the only issue of course is everything does seem to be for a right-handed in terms of safety and uh, cocking arm, but biathlon style. There's nothing to stop you going under arm anyway, but let's have a go. We're down at 40 meters, it is breezy, and this is a 177. I tried some JSBs and it didn't seem to like them, so what I have done, and I've not really shot it yet, I've actually put some QISs in, some 9.56. Let's see what it does, shall we? See if it likes those or not. Lovely and smooth action. Let's give it a go. Now what I'm also doing as well is I'm using some new Apollo targets. It's a new company. They're, uh, they're a nice target. Instead of putting the shoot and seize on, which I love, I've actually put uh, the new ones out, the new Apollo ones. It's the whole thing in 17 centimeters. They also come in 14. So rather than sticking a shoot and see on top of a normal target, which is two lots, you just go straight for those. They seem all right, let's give it a go. I could do is stop talking, then I might be able to get my breath properly to see if I can hit anything. That is a bit of wind and me.
breeze is getting up. Yeah. To saying that, I think that was its way out. Yeah. I'm not going to sit and shoot the entire magazine because we'll be here for hours. The point is, really, a couple of takeaways here. One, it's accurate with, secondly, the right pellets. It didn't like the JSBs, this particular one. It does, however, like the QISs and the slightly heavier ones. That is really pleasing. I'll let you into a little bit of a secret. I was shooting it with the JSBs and it seemed to be going all over the place and I was starting to get a little bit concerned. Put the right pellets in this and you've got a beast. You really have got a beast and it's very easy to use very comfortable nice trigger it's probably a little short trigger to to grip for me because i've got quite long fingers but the action is super smooth you've got loads and loads of shots i don't think there is anything anything wrong with that at all and nice nice scope set up let me go and get that target we'll see what we think shall we it's still part of the pellet in there. I don't think you can complain about that. This, by the way, was an exit as the pellet ricocheted back out of the funnel. That one was the flyer with the wind. Other than that, they're nearly all touching. I am very impressed. I quite like these targets as well. I say these are the new ones from Apollo. I do like the um, accuracy of this. I could sit and shoot that all day and I think all that we'd do is we'd just shoot the centre out of it. So we're not proving anything other than, yes it is accurate, yes it's consistent with the right pellets. I haven't tried the supplied pellets uh, that came with it and that actually come in the box. I don't know, but I can tell you it does like QISs, which again are Chinese pellets but they're used by the uh, Chinese target team, so that can't be bad at all. Nice gun, I do like it. There's not a lot to not like about it. If you like your skeletal style, your, your military style, you're gonna love that. And it does feel quality. It feels like they've got their act together out there at Snow Peak or Artemis, whatever you want to call them. And nice, they've really worked the magic on this one. Back to the studio. Well, I would say that this is certainly capable, and with the power levels and accuracy, then this could be used for target work or pest control quite easily. It is a nice, smooth action and a really, really nice trigger. The magazine is a simple twist and drop, popping the first pellet in skirt first and then the rest just to fill the magazine. It should be good for around 200 shots from a 250 bar initial fill of that 205cc cylinder. The price for this in the UK is currently around £630, which doesn't make it overly costly for your skeletal military rifle. This will most definitely have its fan base, and I can see why. It's comfortable to use, powerful and accurate. Oh, and that huge capacity magazine. It's a nice piece of kit and will give one or two other manufacturers a reason to just check over their shoulder to see what is coming up from behind them. Time then to hit the like button, subscribe, share and click the old alarm notification bell. Check out the AAR website, the Airgun Factory Facebook pages and time for me to thank Vector Air for all their help as always. 
they do put themselves out and it is very much appreciated. The biggest thanks, as always, goes to you guys for watching and supporting what we're trying to do here on the channel. That's it. Please stay safe and shoot safe and hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye for now.